Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week in my life slash day in my life. You know, I kind of mix the two up. But today I am doing so much cooking and I know you guys like seeing when I cook. I made some delicious food today that I shared on Instagram that so many of you guys asked to see how I make it. So I'm showing you that today. And I'm also bringing you along for some cool like house errands that I ran for projects that we're working on and just kind of sharing all of the things that I deem shareable like usual. So I hope that you enjoy today's video and all of the food that I'm making. If you do, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to support my channel and it lets me know when you like a video. So yeah, let me know what you think. And with all of that being said, let's hop right in. All right, guys, so a large chunk of this video is actually food, and we are starting in my kitchen on Christmas Eve. Now, we actually had the turkey thawing at our house for my parents, and I was in charge of making pecan pie. Now, I have never made pecan pie before, and I was legit, like, very nervous, so I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube of people making different kinds of pecan pies. And I ended up settling on kind of following a recipe from the New York Times cooking channel. I really liked it, not only because of the way that the woman, you know, showed the cooking, it just looked delicious, but also because there is no corn syrup in this recipe. And I didn't realize that apparently in a lot of like American pecan pies, corn syrup is the sweetener. So I really wanted to make this like I was joking with Dan, I wanted it to be like a little house in the prairie pie. <laughs> like with old fashioned ingredients and all of that. So I started off by making my pie crust. Now keep in mind, I've, ac I've actually made three pecan pies since this point because I became so obsessed for like a week, but this was my first official one. And it turned out amazing, which is part of why I'm sharing it. And I'm also partially sharing it because in the past, I feel like you guys have liked it when I share even my first times because I'm able to give like feedback and thoughts and you can see where I messed up and all that jazz. So this dough was literally Really just butter flour and a little bit of water and as you could see I broke the extremely cold butter which is a big part of like making the pie crust is you want it extremely cold I broke it up and massaged it into the flour and then I didn't show this but I actually stuck the dough in like the fridge for maybe 30 minutes then I spread out some flour and I rolled out my dough I can't highlight enough I know this is dramatic but I'm just being honest I can't highlight enough how nervous I I was for every single step because if you guys saw my video where I was making an apple pie for Thanksgiving that is actually the first pie product I've ever made and I made it at my friend's house and it was delicious but she had purchased all of the ingredients and you guys know if I'm making something I am kind of particular about the ingredients I'm putting in it but also and this was great for the first time we had used a pre-made pie crust and so part of me doing it this time was I really wanted to make the pie crust from scratch. So once I rolled it out, I measured it with my little pie dish, which shout out to you, Amy, uh, the friend that taught me how to make the apple pie. She actually ended up giving me this pie dish. I'm doing something right now called fluting. I believe that's what it's called, where you do the little zigzag on the crust. It's a mess. It doesn't even matter. So then I stuck that in the freezer. Yes, the freezer while I proceeded to make the filling. Now, this is a big part, in my opinion, of what makes this pie like literally out of this world, like insane. I just have to preface this by saying my mom, who is not, she's not like me, guys. She doesn't just hand out compliments like candy. She told me that this was literally the best pecan pie she's ever had in her life. So I'm just throwing that out there. Anyways, what I'm doing right now, if you're confused, and if I didn't already say it, I am browning the butter. And like the woman who made the pie in the video, Melissa, I don't remember her last name, she said, when you're using butter in a recipe, it's always an opportunity to do browned butter. And basically what that means is you cook it at a very low heat till it starts to almost simmer. And what you're basically doing is you're cooking the moisture out of it and obviously browning the butter so you'll hear it simmer and as the simmering slows down that means you have successfully 
um, like removed some of the moisture, I guess. So at this point, I actually poured in a fourth of a cup of organic maple syrup. And then I let that continue to cook and reduce for maybe two minutes. And then I turned the heat off and I added in another quarter cup of honey and the honey helped to cool it down as well. And I let that liquid sit and cool while I proceeded to start making the rest of the pie filling. That's my sister, by the way, popping in for a diva moment. The filling was super simple. I ended up using coconut sugar because I didn't have any brown sugar and I like coconut sugar. I believe it was about a cup and then I cracked in three eggs. I believe it was half of a teaspoon of salt and then I mixed everything together. And then once that was mixed together, now that was like a dump. Really, you're supposed to actually pour the mixture in slow to prevent the eggs from cooking. But I just wanted you to see this, that we did not do that. And the pie still turned out bomb. So as you're cooking and you make mistakes, just keep moving forward, guys. You got this. And my pie crust even got like a little damaged in the freezer. I didn't clear out enough space, so it kind of got squished and it still worked. So I pulled the pie crust out of the freezer. It had been in there for maybe a half hour. And then I laid a good amount, although with my other pies, I ended up putting more um, of pecan halves at the bottom. And they don't have to be done any kind of way because what's going to happen is you'll pour the mixture over as you're about to see. And then the pecans actually float to the top. So that's kind of how they get. I, I didn't really know, like, are people laying pecans out individually on the top of a pie? It looked so, like, detailed. But nope, the pecans just float up to the top. Pecan, pecan, yeah, one of the two. Pecan, pecan, very close. So when I baked it, this time I put it directly on the rack, but my other times I ended up putting it on a sheet pan and it kind of all turned out the same, honestly, but that's what's recommended. And so I did 425 for about 10 minutes and then I took the pie out of the oven and I actually covered the crust in some aluminum foil, like my friend Amy taught me to do with the apple pie. And then I popped it back in the oven and I baked the pie for about another 35 minutes. And at this point, auntie had stopped by and her and Logie stepped outside in the snow and that was my pie. All right, guys, so now I'm going to show you a recipe that actually ended up being a fail, but it wouldn't have been a fail had I not done this one thing. So I'm going to guide you because as I was tasting it, it was so delicious and I've made this before on my channel. Oh, by the way, we couldn't help but have a slice <laughs> pre-Christmas. I couldn't help it. This was Christmas Eve if I didn't say that already. So I was in charge of also making some mushroom risotto. So I started off, as you saw, by letting some veggie broth get cooking on the stove top. And then I chopped up my veggies, which were mostly mushrooms and then a little bit of red onion. Then I put some butter in a pan and I sauteed my mushrooms and my onions. And then I threw in my aborio, however you say it, rice. It's, it's the risotto. And I pulled out some milk from the fridge because even though I was going to make the risotto with broth, I wanted to add a little bit of milk kind of near the end. So if you haven't made risotto, if you haven't seen my other videos, risotto is not difficult, but it kind of is because you have to really baby it and stand over the stovetop the entire time. And you basically keep like scooping in broth and then stirring and then it starts to dry up and then you scoop in broth and you stir. And it was so good, but Logan started needing a lot of my attention at one point during making this. And so I kind of experimented and my experiment went really badly. To summarize it, rather than continuing to cook on a low medium heat and like scooping the broth and stirring, I lowered the heat and I covered the risotto thinking that the moisture staying in would help it cook but it actually totally broke down the starch in the rice and it made the whole thing taste like glue. So don't walk away from your risotto and don't cover it and then it will be tasty. <laughs> also, it looked like a beautiful, magical Christmas snow globe scene looking outside. There haven't been as many deer recently, but on this night, a group of them came out in front of our house and I just thought I would share because I love seeing them. 
Also, because this is a week in my life, this is actually the second pie I made because I ended up making a second pie Christmas morning that took me way less time to make than the first one because I felt more confident. I ended up putting a little more butter in the crust this time and I think I liked it more. Um, but yeah, just so good. Boop, 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 sorry, boop, sorry. So G, E minor, B. Where troubles melt like lemon drops Way above the chimney tops That's where you find me I'm so happy to have my piano back out. On this night, we also decided to have some of my world famous french fries. I make really good french fries. If you haven't seen me make them in the other videos, I'm sure you can even tell by this image. So we had some french fries on this night. So Dan and I are probably going to be working on this house for like the next six months. I don't know, there's a lot to be done. And a lot of them are like little things like this but you know little things that are important like open electrical sockets so on this day that was actually what dan was doing he was going around the house and reinstalling the like little paneling now i wanted to show you these boots because you'll see them in the outfit i'm wearing but every time i wear them i get so many questions and i wasn't able to wear them for months because they were packed away but they're doc martens that i got from nordstrom rack like three Christmases ago, two or three Christmases ago. Now in this morning, I decided to brew some tea from a local tea shop that I am obsessed with. It's called Fruit Bowl. And as you can see and probably guess by the ingredients, it's really yummy. Oh man, there's my sister dancing before I made her film my outfit. <laughs> a bunch of you have been asking for outfits of the day and get ready with me type things. And I've really just been kind of living in like, my PJs for like six months. So now as we are moving into the house and unpacking things, I will try to remember to share my different looks, guys. <laughs> At this point, my mom and I made our way down a little bit outside of the city to a really cool like antique, not, a, not an antique shop, they also build furniture. It's kind of a few things in one called the Prairie Barn. And so a lot of stuff, as you can see, was covered in snow, but they were building this bed for someone and I thought it was beautiful and I'd show you. They had this beautiful wood furnace inside, had to show you that too. And really the main reason we were here was to get paint for our cupboards. I've been watching videos on painting cupboards for like a month now and my mom felt like I really needed to talk to a person in person to get the final like confidence to dive in. And she was kind of right because getting to talk to someone in person who was echoing all of the things that I had learned online really did make me feel like, okay, I have done enough research. I can take a swing at this, but I've been very nervous. I mean, if you've been following my channel for a long time, I'm not exactly like painting furniture and cabinets regularly, but you know, I'm putting on my DIY queen hat and I'm gonna take a swing and yeah. Oh, I forgot to segue and say, this is not the Prairie Barn anymore. This is a place back in town in Coeur d'Alene called Rebel Junk. And it's the coolest little like artsy antique craft shop. I highly recommend it. Okay, so this is random, but we love making burgers at home. And on this night, we decided to do them protein style, but I had also made fries and I had to go to Bible study. So I made my protein style burger, wrapped it up with aluminum foil. Like I went through a drive through grabbed some pickles, ketchup, put it all in a container and took it to my small group. So that is pretty much it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that I was able to encourage you or inspire you in the kitchen or just something in your day. And if you're having a hard day, keep swimming. I'm hugging you through this audio right now and know that I am praying for you guys. I will God willing see you guys back here very soon with another new video. And yeah, happy new year's guys. Bye.